Hey guys, this is Jay Keeps here from 710 Sports, here to break down the Seahawks 2019 draft offensive players. Now the first offensive player that they ended up taking in this draft was DK Metcalf from Ole Miss. Now this prospect was considered a top 15 pick by most mock drafters. He crushed his combine, it is something out of a movie in terms of his body shape and type. He's 6'3", 228 pounds, 433 speed, had a 37 inch vertical. You talk about every single number, he crushed it, uh, and specifically at the combine. Now, in terms of a freak of nature in a, turn, in a talent, DK Metcalf is exactly what you would want in a receiver. Now, he slides down because it was almost like teams looked at it and said, this is too good to be true. His size, speed, it, it, in terms of measurables, it knocks off everything. He had really good film going deep down the field. Now the issues were, uh, can he change direction? Can he come in and out of his breaks well? And can he run the whole route tree? And that was really the reason why DK, DK Metcalf slid so far down. And so for the Seahawks to take him uh, late in the second round, this is tremendous value. And the upside on this pick is very, very high. The Seattle Seahawks offense is a vertical threat play action pass offense. And DK Metcalf fits exactly that. When Pete Carroll and John Schneider came out after day two of draft, when they talked about DK Metcalf, they talked about accentuating his strengths first. They are going to put him in good positions to be successful, to, to stretch the field vertically, and have the chance to go and catch those 50-50 balls. Everything else, they will work on. Russell Wilson, trust me, he will take the time to, to have DK Metcalf pull the side and work on those intermediate to short pass game routes. They're going to need him to develop into a better route runner over time. But in year one as a rookie, they're going to just simply rely on him being a vertical threat down the field. And in my opinion, he was the, deep, the best deep threat receiver in this draft. So huge pickup for them. Now, going into the fourth round is when they, they made their next offensive pick, and it also happened to be a receiver. Gary Jennings, they picked him up in the fourth round, 120th overall from West Virginia. Uh, to me, I loved this pick. He's 6'1", 215 pounds, uh, very deceptive speed with a 4'4", 240, uh, and he jumped 37 inches, which means that he's ex an explosive player. Now, when I watched the tape, of him at West Virginia, he played primarily in the slot in a spread offense. So to me, with the Doug Baldwin rumors, immediately my mind went to, okay, this is a bigger bodied receiver that has a very good understanding of running routes, uh, finding zones in the middle of the field, uh, short and intermediate, and can fit this pass game very nicely. Now, when John Schneider was asked about Gary Jennings and what his role will be, he actually talked about Gary Jennings' uh, senior bowl performance and how he did very well on the outside and so that leads me to believe that Gary Jennings adds great versatility to this offense can play inside because that's what he did in college has a great feel for the game and understanding for it but also can stretch the field vertically as well so see uh, be on the lookout for Gary Jennings to play both inside and outside in this offense now the next fourth rounder I love this pick uh, fourth rounder, 124th overall, uh, Phil Haynes from w Wake Forest. This guy is a mauler. This is a 6'4", 332-pound monster. And also, he had a 31-inch vertical, which shows you that there's a little bit of athleticism in that big body. This fits exactly what Brian Schottenheimer and Mike Solari want to do on offense. Phil Haynes is a throwback, big-bodied mauler in the run game. He is a nasty, nasty player, while also being a very smart football player as well, doing great in combination. And there's, there's some things to work on in terms of his pass protection, but overall, I really like this pick. It fits exactly what they want to do. It's the body type that they want. And when you have a guy like DJ Fluker and Mike Upati, who haven't necessarily been healthy for a full season. I think this is a great depth piece in terms of Phil Haynes for the Seahawks this year and also what his future can be in the next coming years. You are seeing a difference in philosophy from Mike Solari to Tom Cable. This isn't Tom Cable draft pick of, hey, we're going to get this athlete, we're going to convert him, we're going to try and develop him and mold him into something. Phil Haynes comes in primed and ready to go in terms of exactly what you want in your offensive scheme. And that's what fires me up. 
Now, the last two draft picks, we have running back Travis Homer, six rounder, 204th overall. Yes, they took a running back. But no surprise that the Seahawks just couldn't go through a draft without picking a running back. Now, at 5'10", 200 pounds, he runs a 4'4", 840, and 39 and a half vertical. To me, when I watched his tape, uh, he is an explosive, explosive player. Very, very good running back. Uh, even though at his size at 5'10", 200 pounds, he runs with great physicality and, and was an explosive player in the ACC. Now, I was a former Miami Hurricane, so I love this pick. Uh, and everyone that I talked to back at Miami uh, had nothing but amazing things to say about Travis Homer. Not just from, his, from a talent standpoint, and his ability to not only run but catch the football, which is something to keep an eye on as well because he could turn into your third down back. Uh, the other thing that it also does is that he was a great special teams player, and that's the other reason why John Schneider wanted to take Travis Homer was because he was very willing to, to play on special teams. And so look for him to be a big contributor in that aspect. And lastly, uh, they took three receivers. Yes, I said the Seahawks took three receivers this draft and John Ursua from Hawaii. Seventh rounder, 236 overall, and they actually traded back into the draft. We all thought they were done when we were there at the VMAC. Uh, Taylor Jacobs and I, who's sitting behind this camera, we thought they were done. We we're ready to wrap this thing up. No, they trade back into it to get John Ursua, who really, when you talk about replacing Doug Baldwin potentially, this is your type of fit. He's 5'9", 180 pounds. He runs a 4'5", 6'40", mid 4'5", not explosive in that regard, but has a 37-inch vertical. When I watched the tape, I loved this guy. And John Schneider said that this was one of their favorite guys on their draft board. Reason why, uh, mature, uh, coming back from a two-year LDS mission serving in, in Paris, France, uh, and, and came back and was a really heady football player, understood spacing, understood where to find the zone. And, and from a quickness and agility standpoint, this is where your Doug Baldwin comp definitely comes into play. And from what I saw on tape, Hawaii asked, actually asked John Ursua to run uh, very similar routes that Doug Baldwin runs. So uh, I think that he's coming in here to not only compete for a starting job, but potentially to replace Doug Baldwin, which is huge shoes to fill in. But this is the type of player that you have to have roaming the middle of the field and someone that, that Russell Wilson can rely on potentially as this thing develops. So on offense, I love what they did. Big picture when you look at this, the receiver position just got a whole lot more competitive on the Seahawks roster. When you bring in three wide receivers, that probably means that you're not only looking to replace some guys, but you're desperately trying to figure out who that X receiver is going to be. You know Tyler Lockett's going to play the Z receiver on the right side, but in that three by one, uh, one on one man coverage on the back side, who is that going to be? And they're hoping that DK Metcalf, Jerry, Gary Jennings uh, could potentially fill that role. And then you add the versatility of Gary Jennings being able to play in the slot and John Ursua being exclusively a slot player. Uh, to me, I love those picks and I love what they bring to the table. And so when you're talking about how this affects the roster, uh, Jaron Brown and, and David Moore have been put on notice and they have to step up and fight and earn their job uh, because the, you've got three guys coming in looking to take it. Then you look at, from an offensive lineman standpoint, this is really a depth pick with Phil Haynes. He's not coming in to replace anybody. You've got Mike Upati, he's going to play left guard. You've got DJ Fluker, who's going to hold down the right guard spot. But you've got great depth. Phil Haynes can play left guard and right guard. Uh, he pri primarily played left guard in college, and so for me, to, I, I feel more comfortable about Phil Haynes playing left guard knowing that Mike Upati has not uh, played an entire 16-game season since 2012. So Phil Haynes is definitely going to be asked to contribute and, and be able to pick up this playbook and, and, and be able to come in and insert himself right away. And finally, with the running back pick, Travis Homer, uh, everybody thought that J.D. McKissick and C.J. Procise might be a, a lock to make this roster, and that definitely has been put in question. I love Travis Homer. I love what he brings to this offense. I love the explosive nature of his game, and also he has the ability to be a great third down back, which, which would be exactly what C.J. Procise and J.D. McKissick's role would be. So uh, look at that competition going forward. I think that they address some big needs for them, and I love the fact that there's going to be a ton of competition moving forward heading into OTAs and training camp.